In this video, I want to consider the size of the nucleus compared to the size of the atom. Now, this was a great surprise to Rutherford, who I show on this slide, because he discovered this through his uh, famous gold foil scattering experiments. So here, I also want to try and convey some of that scale, some of that surprise by looking at an analogy to see just how small the nucleus is relative to the size of the atom. So we'll start out then with looking at uh, the classical uh, picture from the, uh, there it is there, from the Rutherford model of the atom, where what we have then is this densely packed nucleus containing nearly all of the mass of the atom, and then we have the electrons orbiting. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is, well, what is the distance of those electrons relative to the size of the nucleus? Now, of course, we're dealing with quantum mechanics, and so when I say what is the distance, I'm actually going to be referring to what is the most likely location for finding uh, an orbiting electron relative to the size of the nucleus. And of course, the nucleus is also a wave function made up of protons and neutrons, which are wave functions. So to simplify things, I'm going to consider the hydrogen atom, where I've just now got a single proton uh, for the nucleus, and I'm going to consider, therefore, just one orbiting electron. So ignore those other electrons on this slide. And to give you the actual numbers here, I'm going to assume um, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 15 meters for the, uh, the diameter containing all of the positive charge of the proton. And I'm going to consider this distance, the most likely location of finding the electron, as being approximately the Bohr radius, which is about half an angstrom. Now, those numbers might seem a bit abstract, and so that's why I'm going to use an analogy. And I'm going to use uh, the Gherkin building in London, which is a skyscraper, or rather a small skyscraper, about 180 meters tall, and use that as a way of conveying how far out the electron is. So I'm going to use that Gherkin building, the small skyscraper, to represent the size of the proton, the size of the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. So to do that, to try and get an idea of how far out that electron is, I'm going to use Google Earth. There is the Gherkin building. And just to point out already, if we look at the entirety of this screen, we would not expect to find the electron located there. We have to zoom much further out. So what about this? Now we're seeing Tower Bridge at the bottom there, the shard there. Would we expect to find the electron there? Absolutely not. We've got to keep on going out. We can see most of London there. Still wouldn't see the electron. We still would not expect to find the electron even at this distance as we start to approach France there. In fact, we wouldn't even expect to find the electron um, within the vicinity of Europe, again using the Gherkin building in London as a representation of the nucleus. In fact, what we have to do is go all the way out towards the USA, the east coast of the USA, and that is roughly where we'd expect to find the electron if we were to use that Gherkin building in London as a representation of the size of the nucleus. So I hope you can understand, therefore, the sheer amount of space between the very, very small nucleus and uh, the most likely location of finding an orbiting electron for the hydrogen atom. So hope that's been helpful. Thanks for listening.